With season 2 of The Ghost of Mario McGee happening sooner than expected, I really think it's really accurate to review one of the episodes that premiered all year of last year, one of which is Ice Princess. Believe me when I say this is that after we watching this episode, it gave me a good perspective of how the world building really works, especially since that this was before all the ghosts have been released in the finale of season 1. Scratch explains the Ice Princess, who is Sonya, enjoys figure skating during the global games. But unfortunately, due to an accident, she, when she turned into a ghost, she unleashed her icicles in Brighton if nothing goes her way. And all honestly, the ghosts in this show that I've seen just made me appreciate of how different and unique they are compared to the other ghosts I've seen in other shows. Which is really saying something when the ghosts themselves have different attributes that make them somewhat interesting but also intimidating. And the Ice Princess has an interesting and intimidating side that you shouldn't mess with. And since that this is the episode that centers around Pete, Molly's father, trying to help out the Ice Princess to prevent the blizzard in Brighton, it really goes to show that they're willing to make the other characters feel useful. Because when all the characters knew about Scratch, including Libby, I'm starting to convince that they actually took an interesting route by not making this a fairly out parents gimmick while Molly is the only character that can talk to Scratch while no one else is. Like, if Molly does all the work by herself, all the while the other characters don't do anything, then it will, pro it will probably be a pain for Molly to do all the optimism in her mind. Because I know full well that she doesn't have the answers to everything. Believe me, there are some episodes where she is struggling for the most part. And it would probably be difficult for her to go ice skating with a, with a ghost that prefers perfection. Otherwise, she will wreak havoc in Brighton. I have to admit that... Th that Ice Princess' motivations make sense knowing full well that she doesn't want a single accident in her performance with her partner. Knowing full well that this is really important, and the fact that Brighton ends up becoming the town that gets the most misery, believe me when I say this, there is literally no other way that more people will probably be part of Brighton if Pete didn't dance with her when it comes to ice skating. If anything, the more I think about the alternatives of what Brighton would have been without the help of Molly McGee or the other characters, it would probably be a lot more miserable if you really think about it. Which made me curious of what they're going to do in the second season. Getting back to Pete, I have to be perfectly honest with you. The stakes that he's dealing with is a lot more complicated knowing full well that it's either doing it right by getting back into the zone of figure skate, of ice skating, which he was a part of during his youthful years, or having a town being frozen in ice. And in all honesty, you can really feel the struggle that he's dealing with because if you're in his shoes that you originally had, that you originally had a talent that you never had, that you never used or never capitalized as you get older and older. It will be a lot more difficult knowing full well that Pete is probably in his 40s or 50s in this in this show. Goes to show that you can really lose your mojo of the town that you used to have, knowing full well that you're dealing with a high set stakes situation involving a town being frozen really in low temperatures. And this might be a prediction, but after season, after the season one finale, where all the ghosts are released, I'm starting to convince that there's going to be possibilities of the ghosts interacting with the other characters, not just Molly's family and her friend, just literally everyone else in Brighton. It will probably lead to more story potentials, knowing full well of the beginning of the episode, showcasing that. There's an ice blizzard going on that people are somewhat aware of, but say that it's a myth. 
and in all honesty, it really shows that there is a lot going on than just scaling people completely, which is what Scratch had been doing since the show began. And since Molly was the is the reason that all the ghosts are free, I'm starting to convince that Molly is going to have an arc on what it's like on being a ghost rather than being a human. And knowing full well that she is going to have a crush with a boy character in the following season, I can't imagine what the what the possibilities are gonna be like knowing full well that they're literally taking advantage of what the season left off when it comes to the ghosts and Molly McGee herself. But let's get into the song of the episode. Second Chance is a slow song, knowing full well that if you hear this song involving two people doing figure skating or ice skating, just make me appreciate of what this show can do when it comes to the variety of songs. Granted, I do not like all the songs, but considering that they took advantage on making this song focusing on ice skating really makes this an actual Olympic winter style of, style of figure skating. But then again, this only lasted for about one to two minutes. And after the accident, you would think that the Ice Princess would go full icicles on Pete and the entire town, but apparently... She had fun so much to the point that she is not going to cause another blizzard in Brighton. And all honestly, knowing full well that it took her longer to get a perfect ice skating session with a certain someone, not really a certain someone, but a partner, just goes to show of how she's embracing her hobby and passion a lot more, even though that she is a ghost and not a human. Though then again, Pete's body just isn't the same as it was in the past. Like, if if anyone at his age would ever try to do something like this, it would probably b been a lot more worse. Believe me when I say that. Though then again, considering that Molly's family had been going around the United States to find a permanent home, either something happened to Pete or it's... It's probably his age, but at the same time, I don't know. This episode is good, and to be real with you, it showcases the potential of what this show is going to be in the future. Granted, it happened in the finale, but who knows? We're probably going to see more episodes involving characters like Ice Princess doing some, some personal stuff while f causing harm to others, but that's what usually ghosts do in this show. Let's hope this show improves, because once the Owl House comes to an end, aside from Big City Greens, there is not a lot of cartoons that can carry Disney Channel. But considering of how little of cartoons there are nowadays when it comes to modern cartoons, we can only hope that those are light at the end of the tunnel. But that's something I'm either hoping or praying. I'm giving this episode a 7.5 out of 10.